What's up you beautiful bastards, Honey Glaze here today, and as you can tell, it's been a while since my last upload. I've been mainly enjoying the newest expansion to a game we all love and hate sometimes, Destiny 2. Now, as of some of you are here for the obvious, I'm just going to go off and say just one thing. Why are Bottom Tree Striker and Bottom Tree Dawnblade still ridiculous? Anywho. What I really want to talk about today is my personal opinion slash feelings slash conflicted emotions about Shadowkeep and what I personally see are the good and the bad. Now bear in mind these are my personal opinions if you disagree make sure to put what you think in the comments below but without further ado let's begin. So as we all know Shadowkeep released to a uh, eh, not so successful launch for at least the first two to three hours. People were getting kicked as soon as they went to the tower. People were getting Weasel, Beaver, and other crazy codes. And were just getting kicked from the game back into the ridiculous, appalling, super duper, extra long queue. Save A! But after Bungie went and took care of some things, everyone was eventually able to play and enjoy the DLC and the game as a whole, especially for the new like Kindergartians. Now, I must say, the atmosphere of the moon, the hive, the scarlet keep, and all the lovely cute evil stuff it was very immersive, uh, meaning it really sucked you in and kept you glued to your seat, at least if you remotely have been paying attention to Destiny's entire story since D1, and if not, then shame on you XX Sweatlord 420 xx The story although, being short and having a very abrupt and major cliffhanging end, it was eh, very well done for the most part. I do feel as though a lot of the enemies we ended up facing within the main campaign greatly contributed due to, well, I mean, let's just acknowledge Ogre in the Tower, nostalgia. Yes, nostalgia. But honestly, as true as it may be, it's still fucking really great. To fight Crota, Omnigol, Gaul, the Fanatic, all these old enemies, it was breathtaking and admittedly had me screaming like a giddy schoolgirl who just seen Shawn Michaels air humping in the middle of the ring. That being said, the return of Eris Morn, the moon, and in general a lot of familiar things just revamped and tweaked was overall a great experience. The triangle shapes have been teased since the concept art of D1 and shown at the end of the vanilla campaign of D2 made a giant return and have done nothing more than to create major, and I mean major, hype for the next potential enemies we have to face. The darkness or the veil, I don't know, fuck. Either way, it's fucking dope. The way your ghost is essentially hacked so this force can communicate with you directly while aboard the ship is creepy, unsettling, and generally will send shivers down your spine. The ending cutscene where it seems this entity can manifest into your into you itself and communicate with you is just honestly creepy. And after your short yet scary conversation with them to be instantly black screened and back on the moon and to realize after five minutes of searching the, the map only to realize it was the end of the story. Uh, not gonna lie, got a little blue bob there. The hype after the creepy I'm not your friend or enemy, but I am your salvation speech to be in the way it was left a small sour taste in my mouth, but at the end just let me hype for the upcoming season of the future DLC uh, to see where it's going to take us. It made me want to scour YouTube, Google, and any search engine device to find out what in the hell is going on. Uh, it was just great. Armor 2.0 changes so far personally have been so, and I mean so, nice. To have whatever gear I want depending on style and flash and getting to pick essentially the role it will have no matter what is such a good feeling while at the same time checking the stats for each armor piece and weighing out the pros and cons of switching certain pieces uh, depend not only the look but the build that I'm looking forward. The season pass itself has been very rewarding and given a nice sense of accomplishment while at the same time not being able to level up ridiculously fast and or buy tiers and skipping the whole grinding process, which is great. I'm glad they honestly took that into account. People would do that. The Crucible playlist, my oh my. My oh my. So much better. Now I can finally choose what game mode I feel like playing and just praying to the Traveler that it's not controlled for the 50th time in a row at Bostock. Super armors being nerfed is a great change as well because now I don't feel like Scooby and Shaggy and having to tuck tail and run for the hills. Every time a super heads my way, I can just honestly have a good chance of killing them. The hand cannons, in my opinion, feel much better, and yes, even with the range nerf to hand cannons, 
They're still viable in PvP and dominantly used, at least on PC. Uh, Scout Rifles are making a major comeback, as I'm seeing and getting killed by at least two different ones per match. Pulse Rifles, though, still have way too much range, in my opinion, and I'm looking at you, Blast Furnace, getting two bursts across the map. Fuck that shit. Mountaintop and Recluse are still the most retarded combo in Crucible and only used by the sweatiest of players, obviously. But I'm also seeing much less supers in the Crucible as well. I had two supers in this pretty decent game I had, and that is with 55 Intellect. And it still didn't feel like too much considering the time gap between each one. One thing I will say is Bottom Tree Striker and Bottom Tree Dawnblade are still pretty overpowered and they need to be looked at. And with that being said, those are just my opinions on Shadowkeep as a whole. Uh, if I had to give Shadowkeep a rating, given all the positive and some negative I presented, I would honestly give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. Story size, not as much as Forsaken, but story quality, on par if not better. The sandbox changes for the most part are phenomenal and are a giant step in the right direction for the future of the game. And Crucible, though still annoying at times, has become much more manageable and enjoyable more times than not. Overall, that's it for me. If you agree with me, give the video a fat smack on the like button. And if you disagree with me, then I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Uh, feel free to share your opinions. I love hearing different opinions. I like having conversations. It's a great way to just, you know, talk and just, you know what I mean, whatever. <laughs> If you want to keep up with me and my grind on Destiny 2, then make sure to follow my Mixer channel on Mixer.com slash HoneyGlazed. I'll put it in the link down below. Uh, I stream usually three to four days a week, and usually Destiny 2. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.